Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be making the bodice part of the vest dress, if you want to call it, of the McCall's M6819 pattern. Here I am cutting out the outer fabric that I am using. It is a nice yellow corduroy. I've never worked with this kind of fabric before, and you can see I kind of struggle with the scissors and went to using a rotary cutter, but I'll go back to using scissors. Next up, I'm cutting the lining, which is just your basic quilter's cotton in a similar yellow to the color of the corduroy. The lining is used on a few of the bodice pieces as well as lining for the skirt. And as the title suggests, I am splitting up this vest dress into two different parts, the bodice and the skirt, just because of the length of time that it takes me to make the bodice. Iron-on interfacing is completely new to me, and I was a little nervous to do this with the corduroy because it has a pile to it, but luckily I've seen videos that were warned me that you need to be careful with this kind of fabric, so I used a thicker microfiber cloth that I have the corduroy piled down on, and I'm not using any pressure hardly at all while I iron this on. I'm just holding it above and hoping that the heat and the steam from my iron is enough to get that interfacing on properly. Now it's finally time to get sewing again. I'm just putting together the back side of the bodice with the two center back pieces and then the two side back pieces. Thankfully this is a non-stretchy fabric, it's just straight woven, so I'm not sitting here wishing I had a serger. A straight stitch is working just fine for this fabric right now. Sewing the front part of the bodice is a little bit more tricky for me. I'm not quite used to these angles in the bust part and getting everything to line up, so I took my time doing this to make sure that it looked good. With both of those sides of the front bust done, I can sew it together at the shoulders. However, I am not sewing it at the sides yet. And as I get to these seams that are put together, I'm sewing the fabric flat instead of moving them one way or the other to ensure that everything looks smooth and that one piece of fabric isn't placed in front of the other. And with that done, I just want to see what that looks like with all those seams flattened out. This part was a little nerve-wracking for me because I've never sewn with interfacing before. So I'm working on the collar and this is supposed to be really stiff, just like how collars on most coats are very stiff. The instructions told me that once I got this right side out, I'm supposed to iron it. However, I'm not ironing any of this corduroy because of that pile. It's actually working out pretty good like that. I'm sewing this onto the back of the coat part now. And I was a little nervous going through all these layers on my sewing machine, but it handled it like an absolute champ. And as you'll notice, I started at the center back seam instead of going from one end to the other, just to make sure I did get that center part to line up on the back of the coat. These are the shoulder flaps now that I'm sewing. Again, pretty easy, just a cute little curve. And again, two layers of interfacing to make these very stiff. I did have to try a few different things to make sure that when I turned these right side out that it didn't look all funny. So I trimmed off as much as I could of the seam allowance and then put the notches in there to make sure that when it goes right side out, it's a nice smooth curve instead of it looking like there's a bunch of fabric stuck in there. After turning them out, it's a pretty easy stitch, just sewing those on, making sure that the seam underneath is nice and flat. Now that all of the outside panels are sewn with the main corduroy fabric, I'm sewing the same parts basically with the lining. Starting with that center back seam and doing the back side panels. The instructions tell you to use the main fabric, so my corduroy fabric, for the two very front panels, so that's what I'm doing. Because I think when everything gets put together, you're going to end up seeing a little bit of that lining fabric, which is why they tell you to use the main fabric for that. So instead of showing you how I sew all of this together with the sewing machine, I'm just going to lay it out flat and kind of illustrate where these pieces all go. So I'm just putting together basically 
where everything lines up between the lining and the outer main fabric. So here we have our back part, our shoulders, our one side in the front, lining that up real quick so you can kind of see where everything is now. Alright, I sewed all of those together now off camera and I'm going to be turning this right side out. I didn't sew the sides together yet because the instructions demonstrate that I'm not supposed to show that or sew that together until after I have it turned right side out and I'm not sure why that is if it's because it's easier to turn it right side out um, but once it's right side out I can now sew the sides together here so you can see me kind of putting together where this all goes the last part I'm going to show here are these decorative triangle pieces that go on the bodice in the very front. Um, very similar to the shoulder pieces, so I want to trim those edges and turn it right side out before I sew it on. Um, unfortunately, it was a few days between filming and editing, and in between that time Hobby Lobby called me and told me that the few extra yards of fabric that I ordered of this corduroy has been discontinued. So it's very possible that when I go to film the skirt part, I will have a completely new bodice and fabric and everything for this outfit because I might have to completely start over again if the other store near me doesn't have any more fabric. That said, here's what I have done so far. I did sew on some little eyelets to get that front part put together. So I think this Aes Sedai outfit is going very well. So if you want to see the rest of this video series, Hit that like and subscribe button and thanks for watching!